In this presentation, we will take an in-depth look at the Robert Sorby eccentric chuck with all its component parts. We will make four different projects. The four projects are of varying complexity and use all the eccentric chucks various holding methods. The first project will be an offset stem goblet. The second will be a three-sided bowl with a clover leaf center detail. The next will be a cabriolet candlestick. We will finish this presentation with a scallop lidded box. The Robert Sorby eccentric chuck uses three methods for holding the wood. These are 1. The screw chuck 2. The face plate and 3. The hexagonal bore drive and socket. The Robert Sorby eccentric chuck is the most comprehensive multi-center chuck available. The unique eccentric boss provides easy and accurate adjustment with its bi-hexagonal locating socket for each of the holding components. This allows for each component to be located at any of the 12 positions. The eccentric boss is marked 0 to 35 on its outside diameter, which can be seen through the viewing window of the main body. These markings are the amount the holding component held in the eccentric boss can be offset from center, 0 being on the center axis of the lathe. At this position, the workpiece will run concentrically to the rotation of the lathe. Any number other than zero will then offset the workpiece by the amount shown in the viewing window. The combination of the amount of offset of the eccentric boss and the position of the bihexagonal socket means that this is the most versatile eccentric chuck available. The Robert Sorby eccentric chuck weighs around five and a half pounds or two and a half kilos. It is designed this way to counterbalance the weight of the workpiece when it is offset. This gives more stability than any other offset system where the main components are offset from the center as well as the workpiece. This adds far more weight and creates a greater imbalance. This would substantially reduce its capability and increasing the risk of damage or injury. Using an inserted adapter system with a large variety of thread sizes, the Robert Sorby eccentric chuck can be fitted to virtually any lathe in the world. The insert screws into the main body of the chuck and is tightened using the large wrench supplied. The chuck can be easily mounted onto the lathe. The Robert Sorby eccentric chuck is also supplied with a comprehensive 12 page instruction manual. It describes the chuck and its component parts as well as instructions how to use each of the holding methods. There is also a separate instruction booklet available to accompany this presentation giving full details on each project including size drawings. Turning eccentrically or off center as it is more commonly known is exciting and different. It is this difference to concentric turning that we have to be aware of. Because the wood will be turning off center, the lathe speeds have to be dramatically reduced and a far higher awareness of the rotating wood needs to be observed. The first project we are going to make is an offset stem goblet. For this project we are going to use the screw chuck attachment. This is fitted into the eccentric boss and held in place by the machine screw and washer. Now screw the main body of the chuck onto the lathe and ensure it is tight by using the wrench. Place the eccentric boss into the main body and rotate it so that zero is visible in the sight window. 
the wood will run concentrically at this position. Retighten the eccentric boss screws. We are using a piece of close grain hardwood approximately 2.5 inches or 62 millimeters square by 7 inches or 178 millimeters long. It has a 2160 force or 8 millimeter hole drilled in one end to a depth of approximately 1 inch or 25 millimeters to allow for the screw chuck. Carefully screw the wood onto the screw chuck, making sure it is tight against the body of the chuck and in line with the lathe. In this presentation we will mention the safe tool rest position prior to and whenever any turning is going to be done. The setup for this is slide the tool rest as close to the workpiece that is safely possible ensuring there is enough room for full rotation of the wood without any interference. Check this by rotating the wood or workpiece by hand before switching the lathe on. Turn the lathe on at a safe speed Using a roughing gauge, turn the outside of the wood down to the round. Switch the lathe off to ensure the entire square has been removed and you have a round piece of wood. Now mark an inch and an eighth or 28 millimeters from the end for final parting as mentioned earlier to give clearance for the screw chuck. Mark with a pencil line while the lathe is rotating. Now put the tool rest in the safe tool rest position. Hollow out the cup shape of the goblet with a hollowing tool to a depth of approximately 1 inch or 25 millimeters. Switch off the lathe and check. Now switch on the lathe, sand and finish. Move the tool rest to the safe tool rest position along the length of the wood. Turn the outside of the cup following the internal profile using a 3 8 or 10mm fingernail spindle gauge. Switch the lathe off and check for a clean cut. Move the tool rest away to allow access for sanding. Now switch the lathe back on, sand and finish. Return the tool rest back to the safe tool rest position. Now using a 3 8 or 10 mm cove cutter or similar tool, turn the first cove at the base of the cup. 
Mark the cutter or tool to ensure all the coves will be the same depth. Switch off the lathe and check the cove. Now sand and finish by hand. Undo the two eccentric boss screws in the side of the main body and rotate the boss so that 10 is visible in the viewing window. Place the tool rest in the safe tool rest position. As the wood is now off center, we will reduce the speed of the lathe for safety. It can be increased with confidence and experience. Switch the lathe on and watch the wood spin to understand what the wood is doing now it is rotating off center. Care must be taken when turning off center. Approach the wood very carefully and allow for the fact that you will only touch the wood in one place on every rotation. Place the cove cutter level with the left hand side of the first cove and create the second cove adjacent to the first to the depth mark on the tool. Care must be taken when withdrawing the tool after turning each cove. Switch off the lathe and check the cove. Now sand and finish by hand as before. Undo the screws and move the eccentric boss to position 20 and retighten. Move the tool rest to a new safe tool rest position. Slow the lathe down further as the wood is now more off centre. As with the previous cove, Place the tool on the left hand side of cove number 2 and create cove number 3 to the same depth as before. Switch off the lathe and check the cove. Now sand and finish by hand. Undo the screws and move the eccentric boss back to position 10 and retighten. Move the tool rest to a new safe tool rest position. As with the previous coves, place the tool on the left hand side of cove number 3 and create Cove number 4 to the same depth as before. Switch off the lathe and check the cove. Now sand and finish by hand. Undo the screws and move the eccentric boss back to position 0 and retighten. Move the tool rest to the safe tool rest position. Place the tool on the left hand side of cove number 4 and create cove number 5 to the same depth as before. Again switch off the lathe and check the cove. Now sand and finish by hand. Move the tool rest to the safe tool rest position. Now turn the lathe speed back up as the workpiece is now running on centre. Turn the base from the outside diameter to flow into the last cove using the spindle gauge.
Sundon finished the base. We will use Robert Sorby Danish oil to finish our turned piece. Now the completed goblet can be removed from the waste wood using a parting tool. Ensure that when you part off, it is to the right hand side of the original safety mark. Be careful when parting off that the goblet does not come loose. Only part all the way through if you have experience and confidence to do so. If not, part a small way through and finish with a saw. Proudly display your offset stemmed goblet. The second project we are going to make in this presentation is a three sided bowl with a clover leaf centre. We will use a bowl blank of approximately 5 inches or 125 millimeters diameter and approximately 2.5 inches or 62.5 millimeters. Using a blank of this diameter, your lathe will need to have a swing over the bed bars of more than 5.5 inches or 140 millimeters. If it does not, then use a smaller bowl blank. Mark the center and screw the face plate into place using the wood screws. Place the hexagonal stem of the faceplate into the bihexagonal locating socket of the eccentric boss and tighten the machine screw and washer. Place the boss into the main body and set to zero in the sight window. Tighten the boss screws and place the tool rest at the face of the blank in the safe tool rest position. Trim the face flat using a bowl gouge. Now mark the centre of the bowl length. Now move the tool rest to the safe tool rest position at the edge of the bowl blank. Turn a small curve to create the underside of the bowl. Now loosen the boss screws and remove the eccentric boss. Undo and remove the machine screw and washer and remove the face plate from the eccentric boss. Unscrew the wood screws and remove the blank from the face plate. Turn the blank over so that the face that has just been turned is facing up. Now using an angle protractor, mark three lines radiating out at 120 degrees apart and then number them 1, 2 and 3. Place the face plate in the centre of the bowl blank and secure using the wood screws. Now fix the face plate to the eccentric boss using the machine screw and washer.
Place the boss back into the main body of the chuck. Set the eccentric boss to zero in the sight window. Retighten the boss screws. Place the tool rest at the safe tool rest position. Turn the outside diameter of the bulb length so that it is perfectly round. Now place the tool rest in the safe tool rest position at the face of the blank. Then true up. Mark the centre of the wood. Move the tool rest away to allow access to the chuck. Undo the eccentric boss screws and rotate so that 35 is visible in the sight window. Retighten the screws and transfer a mark at position 1 onto the main chuck body for a reference point for the rest of the marking out. Move the tool rest to a new safe tool rest position as the wood is now considerably off center. Reduce the lathe speed as slow as possible and switch on. Take a minute to watch the wood to get an idea of how it looks when it is spinning this far off center. Increase to a safe speed where the lathe is running without any vibration. Mark a new center. Switch off the lathe. Now mark the new center number one. Loosen the screws and remove the eccentric boss. Undo and remove the machine screw and washer and very carefully remove the faceplate from the bihexagonal locating socket and turn through 120 degrees. This is four positions on the socket. Replace it back into the socket and retighten the machine screw and washer. Replace the eccentric boss back into the main body. Set to position 35 in the sight window and retighten the boss screws. Now the line mark 2 will be in line with the reference mark on the chuck body. Move the tool rest to the safe tool rest position. Switch on the lathe and mark a new center, number two. Loosen the screws and remove the eccentric boss. Undo and remove the machine screw and washer. Again, very carefully remove the faceplate from the bihexagonal locating socket and turn through 120 degrees. Replace it back into the socket and retighten the machine screw and washer. Replace the eccentric boss back into the main body. Set to position 35 in the sight window and retighten the boss screws. Now the line mark 3 will be in line with the reference mark on the chuck body. Move the tool rest to the new safe tool rest position. Switch on the lathe and mark a new center number 3.
You will now have four centers marked on the face, one true center and three offset centers. Next, mark an arc using compasses from each offset center to just inside the outer diameter of the ball blank. These marks will give you a guide to the outside shape and size of the finished three-sided bowl. Now draw three circles from each center, ensuring that there is a gap between the circle and the arc. These circles will indicate the position of the three parts of the clover leaf. Now mark the circle for the centre dish of the bowl. Loosen the screws and remove the eccentric boss. Undo and remove the machine screw and washer. Once again, carefully remove the faceplate from the bihexagonal locating socket and turn it through 120 degrees to get back to the original position. Replace it back into the socket and re-tighten the machine screw and washer. Replace the eccentric boss back into the main body. Set to position 35 in the sight window. This time we will turn a small dish outlined by the small circle. Place the tool rest in the safe tool rest position and ensure the lathe is set to a very low speed. Switch on the lathe. Do not go too deep as there will be a danger of breaking through to the fixing screws. Switch off the lathe. Check, sand and finish the dish by hand. Check the tool rest is in the safe tool rest position. Using the 3 8 or 10 mm bowl gouge, approach the rotating wood very slowly. Take very small cuts to begin with. As experience and confidence are gained, the lathe speed and size of cut can be increased. Regularly switch off the lathe to check for a clean cut and how much more needs to be removed until the arc is reached. Once the outside is turned down to the mark, switch off the lathe and check there is a clean finish from the tool. Then sand and finish this side by hand. Loosen the screws and remove the eccentric boss. Undo and remove the machine screw and washer. Very carefully, remove the faceplate from the bihexagonal locating socket and turn it through 120 degrees. Replace it back into the socket and re-tighten the machine screw and washer. Replace the eccentric boss back into the main body. Set to position 35 in the sight window and re-tighten the boss screws. Now the line mark 2 will be in line with the reference mark on the chuck body. Now move the tool rest to the safe tool rest position at the face of the wood. Turn the second small dish outlined by the small circle with the centre mark 2. Remembering to only go as deep as the previous dish. Switch off the lathe. Check, sand and finish the dish by hand. Move the tool rest back to the safe tool rest position at the outside of the blank. Now slowly turn the second arc. Again, regularly switch off the lathe and check as before. Once the outside is turned down to the mark, switch off the lathe and check there is a clean finish from the tool. 
Then sand and finish this side by hand. Loosen the screws and remove the eccentric boss. Again undo and remove the machine screw and washer. As before, carefully remove the faceplate from the bihexagonal locating socket and turn through 120 degrees. Replace it back into the socket and retighten the machine screw and washer. Now replace the eccentric boss back into the main body. Again, set the position to 35 in the sight window and retighten the boss screws. Now the line mark 3 will be in line with the reference mark on the chuck body. Now move the tool rest to the safe tool rest position at the face of the wood. Turn the third small dish outlined by the small circle with the centre mark 3. Switch off the lathe. Check, sand and finish as before. Move the tool rest back to the safe tool rest position at the outside of the blank. Now turn the third arc. Again as before, regularly switch off the lathe and check. Once the outside is turned down to the mark, switch off the lathe. Check, sand and finish as with previous sides. Undo the boss screws and rotate the eccentric boss so that zero is once again visible in the sight window. Now retighten the boss screws. Slide the tool rest into the safe tool rest position at the face of the wood. Switch on the lathe and turn the centre dish. Switch off the lathe. Check, sand and finish as before. Loosen the boss screws and remove the eccentric boss. Undo the machine screw and washer and remove the face plate from the eccentric boss. Now remove the face plate. sand and finish the base. We now have a three sided bowl with a clover leaf design in the centre. The next project we are going to make in this presentation is a cabriolet candlestick. We will use a piece of ash but any hardwood will be ideal. The size we will use is approximately 9.5 inches or 240 millimetres long and 3 inches or 75 millimetres square. We will use the hexagonal ball and socket for this project. Mark the centre of each end of the wood. Drill a 1 inch or 25 millimetre diameter by 1 inch or 25 millimetre deep hole in one end using a Forstner bit or sawtooth drill bit. This will hold the candle in the finished piece. Now drill a hole approximately 5 sixteenths or 8.5 mm diameter by half an inch or 13 mm deep in the other end. This is to take the pin of the ball and socket. Push the pin into the hole and hold in place with two small wood screws. Place the hexagonal stem into the bihexagonal locating socket of the eccentric boss.
Tighten the machine screw and washer to secure. Place the eccentric boss into the main body. Rotate so that the zero is visible in the sight window. Tighten the eccentric boss screws to hold at zero. Use a standard 60 degree point revolving live center in the tailstock. Now locate the hexagonal socket over the bore joint and pull the tailstock up to hold the wood in place. Wind the tailstock in and lock. Place the tool rest in the safe tool rest position. Set the speed of the lathe appropriate for the size of the wood and the capabilities of the lathe. Switch on the lathe and turn the wood down to the round, ensuring that the minimum is removed. Once the whole length is perfectly round, the face can now be turned. Move the tool rest to the safe tool rest position at the face of the wood. Switch on the lathe and using a 3 8 fingernail ground spindle gouge, trim the face flat. Now the detail can be turned, this being a shallow cove approximately an eighth of an inch or three millimeters from the outer edge and inner hole. Switch off the lathe and check for a clean smooth finish. Once you are happy with this, return the tool rest to the safe tool rest position along the length of the wood. Now place three marks at one and a half inches or 37 millimeters, five and a half inches or 140 millimeters, and six and three quarter inches or 172 millimeters from the trimmed face. Switch on the lathe to complete all three marks. Using a very fine parting tool, part down at the first mark, leaving approximately one half or 13 millimeters in the center. The cup of the candlestick can now be turned, ensuring that the waste material is removed to allow for the spindle gouge to get down to the half inch or 13 millimeter center at the inch and a half or 37 millimeter mark. Increase the lathe speed as appropriate.
Move the tool rest away to allow access to the wood for sanding. Now sand the cup. Undo the boss screws and rotate so that 25 is visible in the sight window. Retighten the boss screws. Place the tool rest in the safe tool rest position. Slow the lathe down to the slowest speed before starting the lathe. Switch on the lathe and slowly increase to a safe speed. Extra care has to be taken as again we are now turning off centre. Using the spindle gouge, turn the elongated egg shape between the neck of the cup and the second mark. Increase the speed of the lathe as appropriate. Switch off the lathe and check for a clean smooth cut. Now turn a large V shape at the third mark. sand both turn sections by hand. Release the tension on the tailstock and remove the hexagonal socket from the hexagonal ball and rotate the wood through 180 degrees. Reapply the tension with the tailstock and lock. Place the tool rest in the safe tool rest position. Now turn the fine cove, following the outside egg shape. Sweep from the outer edge of the larger section to the neck of the cup. Switch off the lathe, check and sand. Switch the lathe on and turn the other V-shape at the third mark. Switch off the lathe. Check and sand. Move the tool rest away. Undo the eccentric boss screws.
turn the boss so that zero is in the site window. Retighten the eccentric boss screws. We will finish off using Robert Sorby Danish oil. Place the tool rest in the safe tool rest position. Part off the candlestick using a fine parting tool. Take a clearance cut as well as a parting cut. Also allow for the holding screws. And here we have a cabriolet candlestick. In this last presentation we will make a box with a scallop detailed lid. For this project we will use the faceplate. We are going to use a bowl blank of hardwood approximately 4.5 inches or 152 millimeters in diameter and approximately 3.5 inches or 89 millimeters thick. Place the faceplate over the centre of the bowl blank and secure with wood screws. Note the mark on one edge of the hexagonal stem. Line up this mark with a dot on the face of the boss. Locate the hexagonal stem of the faceplate into the socket of the eccentric boss. Secure with a machine screw and washer. Place the eccentric boss into the main body so that zero is visible in the sight window. Now tighten the boss screws. Place the tool rest in the safe tool rest position. Switch on the lathe and adjust the speed as appropriate. Using the 3 8 bowl gouge, turn the bowl blank down to the round. Switch off the lathe and check for a smooth finish. Sand and finish. Move the tool rest to the safe tool rest position at the face of the wood. Switch the lathe on. Now turn the face of the wood to a slight dome shape. Sand and finish as required. Slacken the eccentric boss screws and rotate the boss so that 35 is now visible in the sight window. Retighten the eccentric boss screws. Slow the lathe to its slowest speed. The wood is now at a full off center, so extra care has to be taken as before. Increase the lathe speed as appropriate. Now turn a small button shape, some of which will overlap the edge of the lid. Switch off the lathe. Check the surface finish and sand as required. Loosen the eccentric boss screws and remove the boss from the main body. Undo the machine screw and washer. Now very carefully index a hexagonal stem one position clockwise and replace into the socket. 
Retighten the machine screw and washer. Replace the boss back into the main body with 35 visible in the sight window. Retighten the boss screws. Place the tool rest in the safe tool rest position. Switch the lathe on and look for the outer edge of the initially turned button. Turn the first groove starting from the outer edge of the button. A pencil or fine parting tool can be used to mark the position of the groove. It can then be turned using a 3 8 fingernail gouge. Switch off the lathe. Check, sand and finish. Loosen the eccentric boss screws and remove the boss from the main body. Undo the machine screw and washer and once again very carefully index the hexagonal stem one position and replace into the hexagonal socket. Retighten the machine screw and washer. Replace the boss back into the main body with 35 visible in the sight window. Retighten the boss screws. Place the tool rest in the safe tool rest position. Switch the lathe on and look for the outer edge of the first groove. Mark the edge of the first groove with the parting tool and then turn the second groove. Switch off the lathe. Check the surface finish and sand as before. Again, loosen the eccentric boss screws and remove the boss from the main body. Undo the machine screw and washer. Very carefully, index a hexagonal stem another one position and replace into the hexagonal socket. Retighten the machine screw and washer. Replace the boss back into the main body with 35 visible in the sight window. And once again, retighten the boss screws. Place the tool rest in the safe tool rest position. Switch on the lathe and look for the outer edge of the second groove. Mark and turn the third groove starting at the edge of the second groove as before. Switch off the lathe. Check the surface finish and sand as before. Apply a finish as required. We now have a finished scallop detailed lid. Now loosen the boss screws and return the eccentric boss so that zero is visible in the sight window. Retighten the boss screws. Move the tool rest to the safe tool rest position. Switch the lathe on and increase the speed as appropriate. Now make the inner lip for the lid to locate into the box body. With the fine parting tool make several cuts. One as the parting cut and one to allow for clearance. Another one as a guide at the same point as the inner lip when hollowing the main box. Switch off the lathe and remove the lid. Check and sand as before. 
Return the tool rest to the safe tool rest position. Switch on the lathe and hollow out the inside of the main box. Allow room at the bottom for the holding screws and parting off. The outer limit of the hollow will be the guide left earlier from the inner lip when we parted off the lid. Switch off the lathe and offer the lid up to check for a good fit. When the box has been hollowed, sand to the required finish. Apply a finish as required. Now move the tool rest to the safe tool rest position at the side of the box. Using the fine parting tool, part off the box in the same way that the lid was removed. Ensure that enough clearance is left for the fixing screws. Here we have our complete box with a scallop detailed lid. The Robert Sorby Eccentric Chuck is just one of many unique and innovative products that we manufacture in our factory in Sheffield, England. These include the spiralling system for producing decorative spirals on spindle and bowl work. The chatter tool for decorating the lids of boxes. Also, the Spindle Master for perfect spindle work every time. These specialist tools can be found on our other videos, Robert Sorby Specialist Wood Turning Tools, Part 1 and 2. All of Robert Sorby products can be found in the acclaimed Robert Sorby catalogue. It has descriptions and colour images of all the tools and products. The catalogue is also a very useful guide with hints and tips on tool care and sharpening. The Robert Sorby website is a fantastic source of information on products and tool instructions. Names and addresses of our worldwide dealer network and all the shows and demonstrations that Robert Sorby staff are attending is also listed.